Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be creating this fun green smoky eye look together using a whole bunch of forgotten makeup. I got the idea for this video uh, watching Jessica Braun this morning. She recently posted a video talking about beauty products that she used to really love in the past that she kind of wanted to give a second chance to. And I thought that was such a fun idea because Lord knows I have drawers full of makeup that I really haven't touched in quite a while because I'm constantly testing and reviewing new things. So I thought it might be fun to look through my stash for the products that I really haven't heard anybody talk about in years. Things that I used to love or that used to be really, really hyped on YouTube and now just have completely fallen by the wayside. So if you're ready to create this look with me, let's get into it. So I'm gonna start out today's look by priming my skin and I busted this guy out of my stash. This particular little jar is newer to me. Uh, I recently got it as like a point perk from Sephora. But the last time I had this, it was in exactly the same size actually, and it was years ago I had received it from Influencer. This is the YSL Touche Claw Blur Primer. Basically this is kind of like a slippery silicone primer that really smooths out your skin and it's infused with real gold apparently. Kind of super bougie. I liked it when I had the sample way back when, but it was over $50 to purchase the full size, so I, uh, I never did. And once I ran out, I never ended up using it again. But then when I saw this appear in the little reward section of Sephora, I was like, you know, I kind of want to try that again because it's been a while. So I figured this is the perfect video to use it on camera. Now, the actual full size has a pump, but this little sample has this weird kind of spatula applicator. So I'm just going to put that on my finger and we'll massage it into the skin. It has a scent to it and I can't put my finger on exactly what it smells like. It's a little bit floral and maybe a little bit like cucumbery maybe? It feels really, really silky though on the skin. So if you like that sort of more slippy, silicone-y, silky type texture, it is a nice primer. Moving along, when was the last time you guys saw someone use this foundation on camera? I feel like a lot of bloggers still talk about it, but I haven't seen anyone use the Milani Conceal and Perfect in like a tutorial and I don't even know how long. This guy here, shade 01 Creamy Vanilla, is in my project pan for 2018. I'm trying to finish this guy up and I'm, I'm slowly getting there. So we're going to take one more step towards that today. And then to apply my foundation, I'm going to be using the Real Techniques Diamond Sponge. When was the last time you guys saw this? Oh my God, this has been sitting on my vanity table for like a year and I haven't reached for it. I think honestly, most of it is the fact that it's kind of a pain to clean because it's white. So you really have to wash it well, otherwise it gets stained with foundation. And it was really pretty, so I just never wanted to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. But that is the point of having a beauty sponge. So I, I'm pretty sure Real Techniques still makes these and I did like them, but it's been a long, long time since I've used this. So I'm gonna mix for right now a pump of creamy vanilla with a pump of the shade Warm Beige in this because I'm kind of definitely too light right now to wear just this by itself, but this is gonna be too light if I wear it alone. I do love this foundation. It is very full coverage. It's definitely one of the more heavy duty foundations from the drugstore. Now, I have very oily skin, but I don't find this to be like very matte. On me, it has more of a satin finish, I would say, like a natural to satin finish. I feel like some people call this a mattifying foundation and I, I don't think that it is at all. Maybe it's just that my skin adds in so much extra oil. I don't really know, but I, I do like the way this looks. It's just not the most like shine controlling product I've ever used. I forgot how soft this sponge is. It's like really pillowy and nice. And this like giant flat side lets you blend your foundation out in like 0.2 seconds. Do you guys see what I mean? My skin right now does not look matte at all. It looks, if anything, a little more radiant, but it's not as dewy as like a very, very dewy finish foundation. It's got kind of more of that natural skin-like finish to it. And once I powder it, it definitely will be a little bit more matte. But yeah, I feel like this is just a really nice, 
healthy looking full coverage foundation that only costs like 10 bucks. For concealer, we're gonna be using the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I'm wearing the shade Sand. Again, an oldie but a goodie. Everybody's been hyped up in all these new concealer launches, but this one, this is like a classic and it's great, especially for covering in the under eye area. You know what product I actually really like and I don't have it on hand? That's a very, very underrated and kind of an old forgotten product. The Maybelline Master Conceal. It's the concealer that comes in a tube and it has like black writing on the packaging. That one has like the best coverage to it. A little goes a long way and it's not too heavy. I feel like the Fit Me, because it's in the wand type applicator, is a little bit easier to apply and it's maybe a little bit more luminous on the under eye, but man, that master conceal, that one I haven't had in forever, but that's a great drugstore concealer. To set my face, I'm going to go in with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Pressed Powder. I feel like when this first released, so many YouTubers were like obsessed with this powder. It retails for, I don't know, like $5. And it kind of reduces shine, but it doesn't make your skin look really cakey and flat and matte. It's very lightweight and almost has a slight luminous quality to it, like not a shimmer, but it just kind of doesn't look so flat on the skin. So I'm just gonna tap this right into the center of the face, kind of over the eye area where I apply the concealer. I feel like everyone's so into loose powder right now that pressed powder doesn't really get a whole lot of love, but there are some really good ones out there and I feel like they're just a lot less messy as well. All right, moving on to the rest of the face, let's bronze things up a little bit. I'm gonna be using this guy that, man, I have not pulled this out of my drawer in a hot minute. It is the Makeup Revolution Ultra Bronze. This is gigantic. This is a massive pan of bronzer that will last you what feels like a lifetime and it costs, I think, about $7. So a really, really great budget-friendly find. I'm gonna use this Coastal Scents brush to apply it. This has got to be my favorite angled brush. I've had this for like five or six years. It's still going strong. It washes so well and it retails for like, I don't know, like five or six dollars. It's very affordable and I love it. And I think it's just the perfect shaped brush to contour with because of its angled shape and it's very, very soft. I don't know if there are more shades of this available or if it's just the one. It's called Ultra Bronze. That's what it says the color is on the back. So I have a feeling this was the only one when they released it anyway. But it definitely is a nice color if you have a light to medium complexion. I think if you were very fair, this would be a little bit too deep on you. And obviously if you have very deep skin, it's probably not going to be dark enough. But if you fall somewhere kind of in the middle-ish, I think it's a really nice product. All right, are you guys ready for like a serious throwback right now? I pulled this out of my drawer and man, I have such fond memories of this blush. This is the Too Faced Sweetheart Perfect Flush Blush in the shade Beach Peach. And actually, Makeup Revolution totally duped these. So if you want a more affordable uh, version of this that doesn't cost $30, Makeup Revolution has ones that look literally identical. I haven't tried them, but I've heard they're generally pretty similar. Uh, but this is a really beautiful sort of bronzy, blushy kind of luminous powder. I wore this so much over the summer when I first got it. And I think it's still so beautiful, but it sits and collects dust in the back of my drawer because I have so many blushes and I've been trying so many new things and rotating through them that I just forgot about this guy. And it's kind of got bulky packaging. That's one of the big downsides to this. It doesn't fit in my little makeup organizer that I keep on my everyday vanity. So it's kind of a pain. I think that's why I stopped using it as much, but it is really, really cute and the product inside is beautiful. This is the kind of blush that's perfect for people that don't really like blush because it's not intensely pink it adds like a really beautiful sheen to the skin but the actual color of the blush is slightly peachy and it's not too intense so it's really easy to apply and kind of hard to go overboard with it now this next product is actually brand new to my stash but it is something that i used many years ago and haven't really used in a long long time uh you probably will recognize this guy it is from the balm it's mary luminizer and i feel like this is the highlighter that started the whole highlighter trend so many people kind of got hooked on the whole blinding highlight from this product. 
and I actually have never owned it in full size. I've always had samples of it, um, but I haven't used a sample in a long time and I just received this full size when I went to Gen Beauty uh, New York back in October and I was so excited to have it in my stash again because I feel like it's one of those forgotten amazing products that so many people loved. Oh my goodness, can we please like just take a moment for that glow? It's so freaking pretty. I mean, it's intense. You kind of have to like the beaming highlight, but that's why I said like Mary Luminizer is like the highlight. That started the whole highlight trend and I feel like people don't really use it as much as they used to, but it's just so stinking pretty and it deserves a little more love and recognition. Now, if you're one of the people that has been subscribed to my channel like from the beginning, like circa 2016 era when I first started uploading regularly. First of all, if you are one of those people, uh, I love you. Thank you for continuing to watch my videos. You're basically like the best. But you may remember this product because I used to use it a ton in my older videos. It's the Peak Espresso Natural Stain Brow Powder. And this is one of those kind of hidden gem products that nobody really talks about. It's a little duo. It does come in other shade varieties. I believe this is the one for dark brown hair. But this is awesome. It's very natural and easy to apply, but it's incredibly long wearing. Like you put this powder in your brows and it does not go anywhere. It will last without fading all day long. Now you definitely could go in with a pencil first if you wanted and then just fill your brows in with the powder, but we're gonna do it the like old school way. I always used to do my brows, which was just to use the powder on a little angled brush. And then to set everything in place, because my eyebrows have a mind of their own, we're gonna use the OG, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. Uh, fun fact, I have never actually owned this product in full size. I feel like I've had a lifetime supply of tiny samples that I've gotten in subscription boxes and in like sampler kits and things, so I've just never needed to buy it. It really is an amazing brow gel though because it it's like super glue for your eyebrows. It doesn't really feel crunchy and uncomfortable once it's in there, but like once it sets, your brows do not move. Not gonna lie, I am seriously excited about the eyes right now. Uh, we're gonna start out by priming my lids using this little baby sample of the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. I have not used this in a hot minute, but I know so many people loved this primer when it first hit the market. To be honest, I never was like obsessed with this primer. I was always really into the NARS one, which I also have, but I didn't wanna use that one in this video because I have been using it more lately so I wanted to kind of like pull something out of the drawers. I really hadn't tried in like years. Now honestly, I'm pretty excited to use this palette today because it's been a while since I've done a look with it. And when I first got it, I used it all the time. But as is the case with a lot of beauty bloggers, I've had so many new eyeshadow palettes on a regular basis that I very rarely have time to go back to my old ones because I'm always trying something new. And it's kind of sad because a lot of my palettes that are a little bit older are wonderful, this one included. I'm talking about the Tarte Tardis Pro palette. How many of you guys have this sitting in a drawer somewhere? Let me know in the comments down below. Now when this palette first hit the market, I remember one of the biggest selling points on it was that it had 16 matte shadows and they were neutral, but they also were a little bit colorful. Like you have some plummy berry tones, some kind of orangey colors, that you have some more cool neutrals down here, some that are a little bit more purpley toned. And then you did get like four kind of shimmery shades. They said they were duochromatic. They're, they're not they're not duochrome shades. There are no multicolor shifts in these shadows, but they are very pretty metallic shades. And there was just nothing like this on the market at the time that this was released. It also smells like vanilla, which was again, another really big selling point on this product. And so many people I feel like really used and loved this and hyped it up a lot when it first launched. But with just the inundation of eyeshadow palettes, even ones from Tarte, I feel like this has kind of fallen by the wayside. And what's funny is I feel like if this palette was to launch by another brand right now, people would still be very much into it because, you know, colorful or slightly colorful neutrals are still definitely a thing. But I think a lot of people have forgotten, like, they already have this. It already exists. You don't need to go out and buy another palette just like this. So we're, we're going to have some fun creating a look with this today. And on that note, I also am going to incorporate these guys into my look. I'm not sure which shade I want to use yet, but I pulled out my little NYX Prismatic Eyeshadow Singles. These are some of the best, like, foiled uh, kind of metallic powder eyeshadows from the drugstore. 
pretty sure NYX still makes these, but again, nobody talks about them. I haven't seen anybody using them, uh, and I really wanted to give them some love again today. So now the question is, what colorway do I want to go? I do really like this purple shade. This one's called Punk Heart, but I feel like I just did a purple look when I was uh, doing my recent Makeup Playtime video, and I used the Carity Picante palette, and I've done a lot of warm-toned looks. I feel like everybody's seen the oranges, so I'm kind of leaning towards this guy. This is the shade Jaded. It's a really beautiful green, and I feel like green does not get enough love, especially here on YouTube, so... Maybe we'll give this guy a go. I'm kind of thinking that the green might pair nicely with the top row of shadows here, the slightly more warm colors. Maybe also some from the bottom row here. So we're just gonna kind of play around a little bit and see what happens. So I'm gonna take this shade from the bottom called a bold first on a Morphe M441 brush and I'm just going to buff that into the crease. Now, as I remember, these eyeshadows are actually fairly pigmented and I never really had a problem blending them out. I know that Tarte gets knocked a lot for their eyeshadow formula being a little bit more stiff and difficult to blend and I think part of that is because it's infused with Amazonian clay but it also is very very long wearing it doesn't fade on me as easily as some other shadows do sorry if that was all out of focus I don't know what my camera was doing right there I know this is just a matte mid-tone brown so nothing all that exciting but I feel like it looks really nice I think I'm also going to take a little bit of the shade Classic up here in the top left and just apply a little bit of that to the brow bone area. Then I'm going to deepen things up a little bit lower in the crease. I'm going to go in with the shade Whimsy on my uh, Sigma E35 brush. Ooh, just so you can see, like, you tip your brush in these shadows and there's a lot of kickback. You definitely need to, like, tap your brush off, so just one thing to note. I don't know guys, I feel like this looks really nice. There's a reason why I love this palette for such a long time. I'm glad I busted it out again. All right, time for the piece de resistance. I'm gonna go in with this shade and I'm gonna use my finger to apply this. Oh, just look at how insane that pigmentation is. These are like the best eyeshadows for freaking like $5. But I mean, seriously, I didn't use any kind of setting spray or glitter glue or anything, and you get so much pigment with these. Why don't people still talk about them? I wanna take this little Alamar Cosmetics brush, and I'm gonna go into the shade um, Glam here in the palette, and I'm gonna apply this kind of into the inner corner slash like inner part of the lid just to kind of help transition that green. And then I'm gonna take my Luxie Small Tapered Blending Brush and I'm gonna go into the shade Smoked and I'm gonna use that to kind of deepen up the outer corner and blend the green into the brown. I think I'm gonna go in with this um, Sigma E45 Small Tapered Blending Brush because it has a really fine point. I'm gonna just pick up a little bit more of that shade whimsy and I'm just gonna kind of concentrate this like right on the edge of where the green meets the brown to blend it a little bit more. And then I'm gonna take whimsy again on the lower lash line to kind of tie everything together. So since we went full on green smoky eye today, I feel like a wing is a pretty appropriate way to finish off this eye look. Uh, I really wanted to use my L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour lacquer liner. This is one of the best gel pot eyeliners, like period, hands down, ever. Um, and it's from the drugstore, so it's very affordable. It just goes on super, super creamy, super black, and it like does not budge once it sets. I'm gonna use a little winged liner brush from Sigma here. So flippin' easy, it's just like, whoop, glides right on. Also, not gonna lie, this brush is new to me, and dang, that made doing a wing so freaking easy. So I just gave my lashes a quick curl, so we should be ready to go in with mascara, and I pulled this out of my stash. It's a sample I have of the Benefit, their real mascara, and I know this was one of those huge hits, so many people's holy grail years ago when it first launched, uh, and I haven't heard or seen anybody talk about this probably in well over a year, so thought we might use it again together and see what we think. This has one of those really like spiky, plasticky bristle wands, which is not necessarily everybody's cup of tea, but I like it, and I remember really enjoying this mascara when I first tried it. All right guys, mascara, no mascara. What do we think? 
I like the way that it's looking. I feel like it separates the lashes really nicely, which I appreciate. It's not maybe the most curling formula, um, and it's not really thickening, but it definitely does add some volume and length to the lashes, so hmm, I dig it. All right, so all we have left to do is lips. I whipped this guy out of my stash. It is the Hourglass Girl Lip Stilo. Do you guys remember when these launched? I feel like so many people were raving about them and then, as is the case with many beauty products, as soon as something new came out, that was it. Nobody ever talked about these again. And I do really like them. They're very creamy, very easy to wear uh, lip pencils and they're very, very high end. So the shade Influencer, which is what I have here, is a really, really pretty nude and I think it will work well with this very intense eye look. I'm also starting to seriously question how old this lip product is because it has a little bit of that old lipstick smell to it. So it might be a little bit off, which is sad because it's such a beautiful color and such a beautiful product, but I'll, I'll suck it up and wear it at least for the rest of this video. All right, guys, so here is the completed final look using a full face of forgotten makeup. I'm really happy with how it came out. I did not really anticipate that I was gonna do a green smoky eye when I sat down to film today, but I'm definitely not hating it. And honestly, I'm really pretty happy with all of my makeup. I feel like, oh man, that Mary Luminizer highlight is so freaking beautiful. I had forgotten how stunning that was. So many of these products, I really had forgotten how much I liked them. I probably could honestly live without the Touche Claw Blur Primer. There are other primers I've been using lately that I like more than this, but it was fun to try out again, especially since I didn't have to like go out and spend any money to get it. I was able just to get this little free sample, so that doesn't make me upset. But I had forgotten how beautiful this blush is and how like gorgeous and neutral and glowy it looks. The Tarte eyeshadow palette really was pretty easy to work with and I like the way the pigmentation was able to build up on my eyes. The mascara was really pretty decent. I don't know if this is my favorite mascara or it's blown me away, but it was good. It definitely was worthy of my fond memories of it. And I'm really, really loving this lip. I'm loving this lip more now than I'm remembering it and it makes me sad that it's old and it's probably basically expired at this point because I don't think I would repurchase it. I have so many lip products and it's very expensive so I really need to get through my stash before I can justify spending however much this costs which is probably somewhere in the 20 to $30 range. But it feels super moisturizing and the color is just stunning. So that wraps things up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope it was fun to see some of these old school beauty products in action. If you own or love any of these products, definitely let me know in the comments. If you feel inspired to go through your own stash and like pull out your old makeup that you used to love and create a look, definitely tag me on Instagram or Twitter so I can see your picture. I would love to see what you guys are using and what you come up with. And if you enjoy these makeup demo and like makeup test type videos, give this one a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your feedback. And on that note, I am gonna run, but I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.